Okay, pre-cal students, in this video we'll be looking at another set of trig identities and you need to get used to that. We'll be, doing, we'll be doing a lot of those. The next videos to come we will be studying even more trig identities. So it is very important that you stay current on your trig identity sheet. Okay, in fact, um, during class today I would pause the video and copy down the new trig identities onto your trig identity sheet um, so that it stays current and then continue with the video. Okay, that's my uh, suggestion to you. Moving on, here we go. Uh, your heading today is called Sum and Difference Identities. Sum and Difference Identities, the lesson number is 10.4, and be sure and include today's date, okay? Sum and Difference Identities, and the lesson number is 10.4, be sure and include today's date, all right? Now, if you go ahead and turn your books to page 651, if you would like to, or you can just look at the screen, uh, it's totally up to you, but if you'll look at least you know where these are found in your book. Okay, so if you want to make note of this in your notes, you will find these trig identities in your book on page 651, okay? And I would just, I would pause the video personally, and I would copy these into your notes now, but that's totally up to you again, okay? That is your decision how you do that, all right? Um, these are called double angle identities, or excuse me, sum and difference identities. And I'm gonna uh, wait a couple more seconds, and then you need to pause the video uh, if you want uh, to write these down because I am going to move on the video here in a second so but these are called sum and difference identities and what they do for you if you'll notice is they allow you to take if you're taking the sine or cosine or tangent of two angles um, being added or subtracted either way it allows you to take those two angles and split it up into um, trig functions of just a single angle u by itself or v by itself um, or u by itself uh, v by itself. Okay, so it's very helpful actually, and you're going to see today how helpful they'll be um, as we as we apply these trig identity problem or trig identities uh, to some math problems that we're going to do today in class. Okay, so um, if you want to pause the video and copy these down, feel free to do that. If you want to do it later, um, that's up to you guys. I am going to go ahead and move on. So here we go. Um, let's apply these to a, a bunch of examples. Uh, six to be exact. Okay, so we're going to look at six examples. <clears throat> six examples here very quickly um, in your notes today. So here we go. Here's example number one. And here we go, students. Find the exact value of the cosine of 75. Okay? Find the exact value of the cosine of 75. So here we go. Now watch this carefully, please. Okay? Okay, the cosine of 75 degrees. Now, uh, first of all, it says find the exact value of the cosine of 75. Now, the problem with that is, is the only special angles that we know are 30, um, 45, and 60. Okay, so we really can't find the exact value of the cosine of 75 uh, with only knowing these angles here. But then hold it. Think about it. We just learned today that we can take cosine of a couple angles and add them together and then break it down into single trig functions like this. Watch this carefully. Instead of taking the cosine of 75, I can take the cosine of 30 plus 45, which is 75. And now having done that, I can use my trig identity, which would be this right here. Watch carefully. This is my U. And this is my V, so I have cosine of 30, cosine of V, 45, and then minus, and then sine of U, sine of V. So sine of 30, sine of V, which would be 45. Now here's the thing, students. Listen, I'm not going to take a lot of time and break out the chart for you guys. Uh, we've done these so many times this year. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm not asking you to have these memorized. Uh, but I am saying there's really no need for me to show you where I get the cosine of 30 from or the cosine of 45 or any of these because we've been over these uh, so many times. So I'm just going to give you the answers and you can write these down. There's no need to look these up or draw the triangles, okay? So the cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2 times uh, the cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2 minus, now the sine of 30 is 1 half times the sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Now let's go ahead and multiply these together and see what happens. Okay, square root of 3 times square root of 2 is square root of 6. 
uh, 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1 times the square root of 2 is square root of 2 and 2 times 2 is 4 so they have a common denominator so your final answer would be square root of 6 minus square root of 2 all over 4 now students please remember something okay now listen think back to algebra 2 okay you cannot <clears throat> you cannot add two radicals unless or subtract uh, you cannot add or subtract two radicals unless they have the same uh, radicate and the same number on the inside okay so if it was like this then you could write 5 square root of 5 okay but you cannot do that here you have a square root of 6 and a square root of 2 okay so um, there's you cannot simplify these two radicals okay All right, moving on to the next problem okay find the exact value of the tangent of pi over 12 now it's really hard students to add or subtract radians or fractions so my suggestion to you would be to write <clears throat> tangent of 15 degrees okay because pi over 12 is 15 degrees and now having written that now look what I can put okay okay students okay students so here's what I have for 15 degrees if you think about it I can really put um, instead of adding two angles I can subtract 45 minus 30 because we know the tangent of 45 and we know the tangent of 30 okay so if you look at your trig identities they do give us some trig identities for tan uh, tangent when you're subtracting two angles okay and, and what it would be would be this we would have this would be my u and this is my v so we would have tangent of 45 minus tangent of 30 okay all over 1 plus tangent of 45 tangent of 30 okay now students here we go again I'm not going to take time and, and draw the triangles up here and all that but a uh, tangent of 45 uh, would be square root of 3 uh, minus and hold on one second here Okay, students four so students four the tangent of forty five we get one and the tangent of thirty is square root of three over three, okay? All over then we have one plus the tangent of one is one and the tangent of thirty is square root of three over three, okay? Now please watch carefully how we simplify this. It's real important that you see this. Okay, first of all, um, let's come up here and let's finish it, okay? Now one minus square root of three over three. Well one is the same thing as three over three. And now I have a common denominator, so 3 minus square root of 3 all over 3, okay? All over, now down here, 1 times square root of 3 over 3 is just square root of 3, so I really have 1 plus square root of 3 over 3. Now, this 1 right here is 3 over 3. So, in my denominator, I have 3 plus uh, square root of 3 all over 3, okay? Now, remember, when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, you take the bottom fraction, you flip it, and you multiply it times the top. So I really have times, this top right here, times 3 over um, 3 plus square root of 3, like this, okay? So your 3, so this is gone. Your 3's cancel, and you're left with this. 3 minus square root of 3 over 3 plus square root of 3. Now you should remember what to do here from Algebra 2. Okay, and if I'm going too fast, have the uh, teacher pause the video, okay? Now look. Uh, from Algebra 2, you should remember what to do. Now listen. If you just had square root of 3 in the bottom like this, it was one term, then you would multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. Okay, but you don't have that. You have two terms. So what you have to do is you have to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator and the conjugate of the denominator means you take your second sign and you change it it is it has nothing to do with the numerator nothing to do with the numerator you don't even look at the numerator okay you look at the denominator and you see the middle sign is positive so you multiply the top and the bottom by three square root of three three square root of three you take your middle sign right here and you change and you multiply the top and the bottom by this to eliminate your square root in the denominator, okay? All right. 
Okay, now students, look, we have a, we have a binomial here times a binomial. Let's take three times three, three times this, then negative square root of three times this times this. So here's what we'll end up with, okay? We'll end up with nine minus three square root of three minus three square root of three plus, because a negative times a negative is a positive, and square root of three times square root of three is three. So there's your numerator. Now your denominator, uh, three times three, three times this, square root of three times this, square root of three times this, you'll end up with this right here. You'll end up with nine uh, minus three square root of three plus uh, three square root of three minus uh, a positive times a negative is negative, square root of three times square root of three is three. Now, if you look up top here, a, ne a negative three square root of three and a negative three square root of three is negative six square root of three. And then a positive nine and a positive three is 12, okay? Now, your denominator, look what happens. You have negative three square root of three, positive three square root of three. Those cancel out, and that's why you did all of this uh, to get rid of your radicals in the denominator. And you're left with nine minus three, which is six. So we have negative six square root of three plus 12 all over 6. Now we can simplify this because uh, this is an outside number and this is an outside number and this is an outside number. 6 goes into all of them so uh, 6 goes into 6 once, once, twice. We're left with negative square root of 3 plus 2 or 2 minus square root of 3. Either one of those answers would be acceptable, okay? Okay, I hope this makes sense. Let's move on, okay? Now, Let's go backwards. Let's find the exact value of this expression right here. Now, notice I've said exact value, and you can't really find the exact value um, because we don't know the sine of 42 or the sine of 12. But if you look at your trig identities, um, you'll notice when you have sine, cosine, minus cosine, sine, that is the same thing as, now watch, this is your u, this is your v, this is your u, this is your v. It's the same thing as the sine of u minus v, okay? We're going backwards now. And u is 42 degrees. And v is 12 degrees, so I have 42 minus 12, so I really have the sine of 30, okay? And real quick, I mean, here's 30, here's two, here's one, square root of three, the sine of 30 would be one half. Um, opposite over hypotenuse. So there we go. That was a going, uh, going backwards. In this case, is a lot faster um, than the other direction. This is pretty simple to do here, okay? Uh, you just look for um, in your trig identities um, an identity that matches this right here, and then it matches up with either a sine or a cosine or a tangent. Uh, where you're adding or subtracting angles and then go backwards. Pretty simple, actually. Okay, All right, moving on. Now, um, this is a little more difficult here. I want to remind you that whenever you take the arc tangent or the arc sine or the arc cosine of something, it's really an angle, and I've told you that before. Um, remember in Algebra 2, um, log uh, base A of B equals C is the same thing as B equals A to the C power from Algebra 2. You should remember that. Well, in other words, logarithms were another way to write an exponential ex expression, okay? Well, it's the same thing here. Arc tangent, arc sine, arc cosine are really another way to write an angle, okay? So really, because this is arc tangent, this is really our, this is really our u right here. And because this is arc cosine, this is really going to be our v, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go ahead and write a triangle. And I'm going to put uh, u on the inside. And arc tangent of 1 really means the tangent of u equals 1. Arc tangent means tangent of u equals 1. I'm using u because um, our trig identity is u and v, so I'm using u and v for those reasons. Okay, so uh, cosine um, tangent of u equals 1. And then plus cosine of v equals x. Okay, so I've rewritten my cosines. Now, uh, here's u. Uh, um, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over 1, okay? Uh, which that would give me square root of 2 right here. Now, for v right here, 
here's V, angle V, and its cosine is X over 1, so adjacent is X. Hypotenuse is 1, so this over here would be square root of 1 minus X squared. If you use Pythagorean's theorem, that's what you would get, okay? So now I'm looking pretty good. Now I can go ahead and say the cosine of U plus V, because I have a triangle over here that represents U, and a triangle over here that represents V, so I'm doing pretty good. And cosine of u plus v would really be this. It would be, um, let me glance at my trig identities real quick. It would be uh, cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. So cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. Okay, so with that in mind, cosine of u would be um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so square root of 2 over 2. Uh, cosine of v would be x over 1. That would be x adjacent over hypotenuse minus a sine of u would be opposite over hypotenuse. That would be uh, square root of 2 over 2. And then sine of v would be opposite over hypotenuse. So it would be a square root of 1 minus x squared. Of course, we put all that over 1. Now let's go ahead and multiply. Um, put this over 1. So I have x square root of 2 over 2 minus uh, square root of 2 times square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, and actually, I think what they've done here, well, I'm going to leave it like this for now. So, um, so we have square root of 2 um, times this right here. Now, to be honest with you students, whenever you take a radical, if you square root of 5, times the square root of 20, that would be the square root of 100. You can multiply radicals together um, as long as they're both square roots. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply uh, these two radicals together. Of course, denominator is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. And square root of 2 times the square root would be 2 times 1 would be 2 minus 2x squared. Okay, so I took the inside here, 2 times this inside right here, okay? And then we'll go ahead and put these two together. So I have x square root of 2 minus square root of 2 minus 2x squared all over 2. And there's really nothing else you can do to that. It's totally acceptable. And you have written um, this uh, entire expression here as an algebra expression, OK? And it's totally acceptable. All right? OK, I must go ahead and continue on with number um, the next problem. All right, next one. Here we go. Um, okay, we're going to simplify this. And so notice we have cosine and two angles that are being subtracted. So whenever you have cosine of an angle minus an angle, you really have cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine. So we have cosine of x, cosine of, I'm going to go ahead and put 270 because 3 pi over 2 is 270. And then plus sine, sine. So plus uh, sine of x and then sine of 270. Okay, and here we go. Uh, cosine of 270, by the way, uh, quickly grabbing my calculator here, cosine of 270 would be 0, and the sine of 270 would be uh, negative 1. Okay, so we have cosine x times 0 plus sine of x times negative 1. Okay, well, cosine of x times 0, anything times 0 is 0 plus. Uh, the sine of x times negative 1 would be negative sine x. So 0 plus negative sine x is negative sine x. So, oh, again, students, pretty simple, not that difficult, as long as, as, long as you have your um, identities written down, you can make your substitutions. Really not that bad, okay? Okay, now we're going to solve an equation. This will be pretty challenging, so please pay attention, okay? <clears throat> this will be pretty tough. We're going to solve this equation right here. So here we go. Uh, notice, first of all, we have sine of two angles being added. So I'm going to take this entire expression here, and I'm going to substitute it out, okay? For, uh, whenever you're adding two angles, it's sine, cosine, plus cosine, sine. So I have sine of x, cosine of 45 degrees, plus cosine of x, sine of 45 degrees, okay? So there we go. So this is totally gone. Now, plus... And I have this trig identity here. And whenever you're subtracting two angles and taking the sine, it's sine, cosine, minus, cosine, sine. So here we go. So it's going to be sine x uh, cosine of 45 degrees minus 
cosine of x a sine of 45 degrees equals 1. Now hopefully um, some things will cancel out here. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Look, we have a, a positive cosine x sine of 45 and negative cosine x sine of 45. So those cancel out. Okay, so that's good. Um, so this right here is gone with this right here. Okay. That's a little bit of a help. Now, um, cosine of 45, what would that be? That would be square root of 2 over 2. So what I really have is this, guys. I have a sine of x times square root of 2 over 2 plus sine of x times square root of 2 over 2 equals 1. Now sine times square root of 2 over 2 would be square root of 2. over 2 sine x plus square root of 2 over 2 sine x equals 1. Okay, now we have like terms. So we're going to go ahead and combine these two like terms together. Okay, so square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2 would be 2. Let me see what we're doing. We're adding. Uh, we have a common denominator 2 and 2, so it stays at 2. Uh, 1 square root of 2 plus 1 square root of 2 would be 2 square root of 2 sine x. Let me show it to you this way. If, if you had 2 sine x plus 3 sine x, you would just have 5 sine x. You would add your 2 plus your 3. Okay. Well, same thing here. We have sine x, sine x. So we're going to add this plus this. And square root of 2 plus square root of 2 is 2 square root of 2 over 2. Sine x equals 1. Uh, this will reduce right here, so I really have square root of 2 sine x equals 1. Now we've done a lot of work, we've really broken it down very nicely, okay, because now we have uh, divide both sides by square root of 2, and I end up with sine of x equals 1 over square root of 2, which really is sine of x equals square root of 2 over 2. Wow, it's a lot of work, guys, okay a lot of work but to be honest with you we've simplified it down pretty nicely here okay so now we're left with this right here and now we should be able to solve this pretty nicely okay think of your um let's see here uh um your right triangle guys your 45 45 you have one one square root of two okay now Sine of uh, sine of 45 degrees would be opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 45 degrees would be one over square root of two, which is square root of two, square root of two over two. So really, when you <clears throat> when you take the sine of 45 degrees, you get square root of two over two. But remember, we want this all of our answers in this domain. So we want to know when you take the sine. Of a certain angle, you get square root of 2 over 2 positive, so sine is positive here and sine is positive here. Okay, so we have 45 degrees here, 45 degrees here, so one answer is 45, and of course we like radians, so pi over 4, and the other answer is 135 degrees, and if you uh, wrote that in radians, you'd get 3 pi over 4. So that's a lot of work, but we did it. We did it really well, and there's your two answers, okay? So uh, with all of that in mind, um, what we've learned today is this. Let's quickly review, okay? What we've done is we've looked at a new batch of trig identities. And remember, we're going to learn a lot more um, over the next week or so, okay? But we've learned how to take some and different identities and how to use take, take them and use them to help us simplify trig expressions or how to evaluate trig expressions uh, um, using exact values by taking an angle like 75 and splitting it up into two angles that we know. Okay, so that's pretty much what we've done today. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email. I feel like your homework will be really helpful to you and, and allow you to practice quite a few of these. Okay, have a good day.